Hey, Facebook friends and YouTube. I'm going to uh, read my favorite or what I think are the best verses out of Mark now. I'm not going to do every chapter of, or every book of the New Testament today, but maybe I'll do like four a day or something. I don't know. All right, Mark, the best verses out of chapter one. John the Baptist says, After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So anyone who's Christian has been baptized by the Holy Spirit. There's a popular teaching that you get baptized in water, and then years later you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, but that's not true. When you get baptized um, with water, you are also baptized with the Holy Spirit, or before. Um, he also said, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Repent means to turn the other way and to be totally different. <clears throat> um, I like when Jesus said, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Meaning the laws were made for our good to give us peace, not to stress us out. That's what Jesus meant by that. Jesus asked the Pharisees, What is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he was healed. I really like that, that he was deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. So, so, yeah, I mean, you can find that inside the church today still. So don't be stubborn. <laughs> don't think that you're right and everybody else is wrong. That's what he was mad at the Pharisees for. And then Jesus said, Who are my mothers and my brothers? Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mothers, my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. And it should be the same for us. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. Amen. So it's like that. Like our faith might start out like a tiny little mustard seed, but it can be really big and fruitful if we water it. Just like a seed, you got to water it. And water is usually like the Holy Spirit. So worship, worship is your water. And then your son, like Jesus the son, is reading the word. Jesus said, I am the word. So yeah, get your son and your water so you can grow up big and strong. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? And a woman touched his clothes. He said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Your faith has healed you. So that's interesting. So if you are waiting for healing from God, um, have more faith. This is interesting. Jesus could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Hmm. Interesting. So even Jesus was hindered from doing miracles because of the people's lack of faith. Hmm. Jesus walking on the water. That's funny. When they saw Jesus walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were afraid. Immediately he spoke to them, then he climbed in the boat. They were completely amazed, for they had not understand about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. They didn't realize that since Jesus was doing all these miracles, that he was the Christ that was prophesied in the Old Testament. This is one of my favorite verses. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their, worship, their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. That is true for, like, denominations. Um, they have their own teachings of men, but they need to focus on what the Bible says rather than what people say. You know, when people read all these commentaries and stuff. Why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth, no sign will be given to it. So sometimes when we ask God for a sign or a miracle, he can get mad like only if like we need that sign to have faith you know because he said blessed are those who have not seen and still believe 
I like this. He said, I have compassion on these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. That was when he fed the four, the five, the 4,000. And then Jesus said to his disciples, Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts so hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? Don't you remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? How many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They said 12. He said, Do you still not understand? Like, do you, like he was saying, Do you not understand that I am God and I can do anything? And then this passage is good. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. And then this is interesting, a boy with a demon-possessed spirit in him. The father says, from childhood, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me in my unbelief. Yeah, that was good. Good little conversation there. <laughs> If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them, taking him in his arms. He said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Yeah. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me, God the Father. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. So he's basically saying the death penalty for sexual, childhood sexual abuse is what should happen. At the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples said, Who then can be saved? With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or filled for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age and in the age to come. Many who are first will be last and the last first. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. So we become, we become great by serving, not by saying, I'm great. <laughs> yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come, when Jesus comes back. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back. Meaning, we should always be living well, so that when Jesus comes back, we won't be ashamed of anything. Oh, and here he is at Gethsemane already. Uh, Jesus says, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. He says to his disciples, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And then Jesus is crucified. It was the third hour when they crucified him. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, uh, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then when he resurrected from the dead, he said to his disciples, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Yeah. 
and have to be baptized. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Amen. So I pray that that bless you all, and have a great day.